When I was a kid, I had a harmonica. In recovery, they gave me harmonica to kind of work my lungs. I was gonna try to learn a song for you guys, and then, uh, and then I didn't. So last summer, um, there was a, a worldwide pandemic, uh, coronavirus, um, COVID-19, that's what they were calling it. And I was being very, very cautious. And then I got a new job um, also in sales that um, required me to go on a business trip to Corpus Christi. And although I was wearing a mask and trying to be as safe as possible, I probably contracted um, the COVID-19 virus somewhere on that plane. Andrew is one of the sickest patients we've had to, to perform a transplant on. He'd been on ECMO for almost six months. ECMO stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. It's basically a machine that helps take some of the strain off the lungs. They were severely inflamed with a lot of uh, scar tissue and adhesions that that uh, that were he, unfortunately his body was never never able to recover from. Because one of the reasons I wasn't going to be able to get a transplant was because I had this um, ongoing infection. Just based on that, a lot of a lot of uh, transplant hospitals kind of said no but the infection was in my lungs that were dying. And so they were like, well, when you take out the lungs, you're gonna take out the infection anyway. And then I got transferred here for uh, evaluation to uh, Houston Methodist. They approved me for new lungs and it was less than a week later, I got new lungs because I was pretty high up on the list because of uh, the severity of it. The surgery itself, was very complex because of that. All the scar tissue, all the inflammation, it was very difficult to, to detach his lungs from his chest wall. Uh, because of all the adhesions, there was a lot more bleeding and a lot more difficult to find areas where, where we can separate his lungs safely. Uh, we were able to do it, but it, but it, did, it did take quite a bit of, uh, of time and effort just to, to get through it all. I'm very happy with how he's progressing. His lungs are, are recovering well, and I'm, I'm hoping you know, in a few months from now, this will all just be a bad dream for him and he'll have, recovered a lot of his previous life. My recovery has been a lot slower than I like. Um, walking isn't as easy. I mean, eight months inside a hospital bed, your muscles forget that they're muscles. Recovery, is, it's not just like a physical thing, it's like a mental thing too. You kind of have to like figure out how to mentally deal with all your issues now. Like you try to do everything the right way. Like even for a while, like, I, I, there's there's a very specific way that you want to stand up that you don't want to that you're not going to hurt yourself. So you got to do everything very specifically, very deliberately. We've done four uh, four transplants for COVID so far, and we do have some more people who are waiting and. I anticipate there'll be more and more experience throughout the United States as, as we see these people with chronic lung disease from, from COVID needing, needing transplants to, to fully recover. I was extremely lucky. I almost died at least three times because of COVID-19. And anybody getting um, worried about getting the vaccine, like you're, this, this is the lottery that you're playing. Just learn from my experience. I was young, healthy, and now I'm out uh, two lungs and a little bit of my hairline. It, it, it wasn't a fun experience at all. I was referred to as a unicorn, um, which is apt because uh, people in my situation don't really pull out and are here as often as we'd like. And for a while, like everything was going wrong. And then once everything, and then we got to a point where just like nothing else could go wrong. Like if anything else goes wrong, we're done. And then th that was a point where we just started getting wins 
and wins. And uh, it's nice being a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs>